Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 11, Part 2 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue to discuss God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, still focusing on the human conscience, explaining the external influences that affect and control the development of a desire to listen to and act upon truth received by the conscience. The session was recorded on the 10th of January 2018 from 10.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. And I suppose in this section I could probably list a few personal examples of things that have um, that I've experienced mm-hmm. when challenging sort of the family system, parental emotions and parental addictions. And I think a lot of this is very common for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that perhaps the level of um, investment that a parent has in a child and a child being and living and behaving and feeling a certain way often means that that child doesn't ever challenge the parents' um, beliefs or emotions or lifestyle. That's right. Um, Certainly uh, the level of control that I experienced growing up was quite firm but appeared to others to be very... um, innocuous <laughs> yeah innocent and perhaps even loving loving <laughs> <laughs> and this is yes. the illusion that many families and particularly parents mm-hmm. impose upon their children they sort of they cause their children to believe oh my family's the best family we've grown up in a nice loving family when really the parents are way too invested in the child maintaining and believing and supporting the parents beliefs yeah, and something I've learned from my own experience is that, that I was someone who would definitely have said I was almost arrogant and superior about how wonderful my um, childhood experience was. Mm. And sometimes that um, still shocks me today that I was I was living so in tune with what my parents desired for me to feel and believe and think about my childhood that I was completely, almost completely detuned from my own personal experience. Mm. And so um, for me to challenge my parents' uh, beliefs and lifestyle and emotions has is gargantuan for me. And mm. I'm still going through that really emotionally, mm. Mm. Um, just feeling about what it was like to, to have such, uh, and that's perhaps why I wanted to raise it now, because we've spoken about things like, threats and attacks and demands and but in my in my childhood experience the system the family system was such that everything was rosy as long as nobody rocked the boat as long as everyone towed the line yeah, yeah. and so and i think that's pretty normal i think so too yeah for most people yes. as long as you tow the tow the line don't rock the boat don't cause any upset they'll be real happy with you <laughs> the real key to see whether what a person's true condition is is to disagree with them. Yes. If you can disagree with them and, and they go from being like a nice person to being a terrible person in yeah. the space of a minute, yeah. <laughs> then you know <laughs> yeah. that yeah, just disagreeing with this person is, not, not, is going to yeah. cause problems. And I suppose it took me until I was 29 years old to disagree with my parents. Mm. And the fact that it took me that long was an indication of how much... Um, control and threat there was already there existing Correct. in my life and the the emotional the emotions of the parents were already quite firmly established and you as a child would have known if i threaten those emotions then i'm going to get attacked and but you never threatened them so you never got attacked so you think oh everything's good <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i and i don't think i just think i thought exactly what they wanted me to think that's how it feels now yeah but the only reason why a child thinks exactly what the parent because wants to think inherent threat there that's 100 percent right. of the time that's right yes that's constantly there and doesn't ever go away so the child learns that knows that and understands that and then conforms to it generally yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah and so um what but what i've come to understand and and feel about in the subsequent years is the ways that there was um less overt or seemingly attacking um 
manipulations on my behavior and my emotions and thoughts. So um, some of the things that I experienced were uh, if I attempted to do something different or feel something different or say something different, uh, there was a lot of projection on me that I was making. I was harming people. You were harming your parents. I was harming, yeah, I was harming my parents, which I globalise to feel now that I'm quite a harmful person. Exactly, which is not true. Yeah. And this is, this is the trouble with a lot of these kind of parental belief systems being imposed on the child. It can be quite manipulative. Guilt trips are a very effective form of control of a child and making the child feel bad about itself rather than seeing the true problem is a is a great way of controlling a child and even controlling them when they're adults yeah so so the best way like my, and this is a unfortunately what most abusers do is they attempt to make a person feel bad about themselves in order to contain con get control of them and this is not the same as sharing truth with a person this is just an attempt to get manipulation or control over a person and and parents are often expert at that. They've had years of of they've had years of experience with it. And then having children, which is so malleable, also gives them plenty of time to develop even more experience. Yes, and a good indicator of when uh, this has happened to you as a child. Um, is when someone does just speak truthfully and you do immediately believe that they are trying to make you feel bad about yourself and That's pull right. you down in some way. That's right. Um, because that indicates that that has occurred to that you have been pulled down. That's yeah. right. And that, and that there was an attempt, you know, my, the, the fact that you, you are all automatically believing that every uh, sharing of truth is an attempt to pull you down mm. means that during your childhood there was always the threat of pulling you down. Exactly. And, and that yeah. was a way to make a person get back into line, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And, and these are techniques that are regularly used by parents. Mm. Yeah, and so some of, some of the other things that I experienced then when I attempted to disagree with my parents um, as an adult were it was overt expressions of what was um, being communicated to me through guilt and um, kind of being made to feel responsible through unspoken oftentimes, but sometimes spoken, but emotional demands. Mm. So, so then um, as an adult, then when I said I'm doing something different, uh, I was told that I was, you know, I was just not respecting my parents and that I was just selfish and that I was Dishonoring um, them. hurting them and attacking them and mm. destroying them and making their life difficult. And yes, yeah, <laughs> a sign is the narcissistic parents because <laughs> a, chi a child making a different choice than a parent should have zero effect really on the parent's life. And uh, if, it, if it does have some effect on the parent's life, it's because the parent has embroiled the child in their life. <laughs> the reality is we are all individuals and can make choices. And particularly when we choose to make choices that are more loving, then why would it be a bad thing for anybody around us, including our parents? Mm -hmm. So in your case too, when I first met you, obviously um, everything was fine until you decided you wanted to love somebody they didn't like, <laughs> which was me. <laughs> yes. And then, of course, you know, a, a huge amount of attack and ridicule and other emotions came, not just to yourself, but to me as well. And that, that's also an indication that that threat was already there. Yes. The, the, the condition was already established in the parent to do those particular things. Yes, and, and that's... Um... Yeah, and I can also see that many of the other choices that I had made in my life thus far um, that garnered a lot of approval were not my choices either. No. They were not based on my personal desires. They were based on my desire to avoid attack and receive the reward of approval mm. from my family. So mm. Mm. Um, there's a huge hijacking of the person's nature mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and let alone the connection to the conscience, I suppose, we exactly. should bring it back to connection to the conscience. Yeah. Something that, um, this is the hardest part of the series for me, these discussions we're having about conscience, as you know, because, mm. um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even well, I, know I, how to talk about it probably, but it, it, I feel such a great level of um, sadness. And loss. And loss, uh, because I, which I feel 
once people hear about the conscience, I feel they start to connect to frequently this feeling of sadness and loss that they've lost their connection with God, it's truth. They've lost their connection with themselves as well, because obviously what we've talked about, what parents do here in this section, we, we can see that it's purposefully constructed for the child to lose its own connection with itself. Yeah. And, and that's the primary goal of the parent is to cause the child to lose its connection to itself in order for the child to only be connected to the parent, <laughs> in order for the child to feed the parent's addiction. And the trouble with that is that it basically destroys your sense of self yeah. and, and your, your connectiveness to yourself. And what do you want and what do you feel and what, how do you want to act and who do you want to love and who, what do you want to believe? And all these other things are all now influenced by yeah. the parent's desires rather than your own. Yeah. So, so there's a, once a person realises all that, there's a deep level of sadness associated with the fact that what are my desires? I don't know. And, and how do I find out? And the key to finding them out is to disconnect <laughs> from the parents' belief systems and the beliefs and, the, and supporting the parents' emotions. That's the key to finding out what you want, what you desire, what you feel is best for you, what your personality and nature is. Because all of those things your parents haven't supplied. They're all parts of your, what God has supplied. Yeah. And, and the more the parent disconnects you from the conscience, the more the parent also disconnects you from your soul. Yes. And, and, that, and there is going, going to be, most people on the planet will have a fair bit of grief to feel about that. Yeah. Mm. And I suppose, um, as we're talking about my personal experience, mm -hmm. I, I would like to add that um, a lot of people accuse you of doing to me what my parents, in fact, did to me, mm. not seeing that... Um, you have encouraged the opposite condition in me mm. and uh, that has been incredibly supportive being open to that influence mm. not not your influence to share your beliefs but your influence to discover my own nature and my own direction mm. yeah I, I just wanted to share that because obviously i'm being quite um open about some personal emotions and i know that a lot of people believe that because I've been exploited in one way by my family system that I am then open to being exploited in the same way in the world, which is true and happened many times before I met you, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which it is not occurring now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and this is the thing too, I suppose, is that most people believe that, uh, it's interesting I feel that even people assume that because that the, the presumption of such a thing indicates that everybody from their childhood expects it. Yes. <laughs> and so when, you know, you're engaged in a more loving relationship, the person who loves you doesn't try to manipulate you or control you. The person is, ju the person is just going to share truth with you and leave everything up to you as to mm. what you decide to do. Now, this is exactly what God does through the conscience, yes. ironically. <laughs> God is just sharing truth with you and then leaving the rest of it up to you. What do you want to do with that? It's up to you what you do. Mm -hmm. Now, anybody who loves you will want to do that with you. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, most people in their childhood have not ever experienced that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as an adult, they never do it or experience it in their relationships. Yeah. And it's quite rare to actually see adults living together who actually are sharing truth at the actual truth with each other without in being enraged or otherwise you know you know have other really negative emotions and in let and just let the person do what they decide to do in order for each person each party in the relationship to discover themselves and therefore be able to share themselves more with each other and and that's really what god's trying to assist us to do through his operation in the conscience but, but it's also what most parents are trying to detune you from because mm -hmm. all they want generally is that you believe, feel what they believe and feel and do what they want you to do. <laughs> <laughs> Although it does vary between f families. There are certain flavours and elements to it in each family, but I, I'm sometimes astounded at how much... Um, how free some people feel to live their own life <laughs> and yeah, make decisions independent of their family. I, I, don't, I don't see a lot of people who are free to live their own life. You know, they are still 
as we get on to our next subject, so still conforming to society's demands a lot, mm. as society reacts in a very similar way to what parents react. Uh, so I, I don't actually observe that very much at all. And there are people who claim they are free to yeah. make their own choices and decisions, but frequently they are also quite selfish and they're not connected to the conscience at all. Mm. So, so, you know, to be connected to your conscience and on top of that, also honour God's truth in your interactions and dealings with others does take a lot of courage, as, as we'll talk about later, and does take a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, do, you, you do need to get rid of emotions where you want approval and acceptance and other mm. kinds of emotions like this, uh, because if you don't, um, you'll end up conforming to something. Mm. Um, you know, whether it be a social group, a religious group, a political group, a scientific group, a, you know, wh whatever, you'll end up conforming to something because you will not be able to help it <laughs> at the yeah. end of the day. Your emotions will demand it. Mm. And, and unless you get rid of those emotions that demand it and, and connect with the conscience and allow God to tell you what is the truth about all these matters and, and then act upon that truth, it's highly unlikely that you're not going to be influenced in some sphere of your life by external influences as we we're discussing here. Mm. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I feel like both of our personal examples oh. are such that we've had a, a, a lot of experience with this <laughs> where, you know, I've grown up in a very religious environment and obviously confronting that environment meant losing my friends, my family and so forth. And then, of course, confronting them all emotionally on certain issues that are in the family, you know, with regard to their, their you know, who's the parent of what child and all those kind of things. <laughs> um, you know, that all had a tremendous uh, upheaval, ca mm. caused tremendous upheaval, not because that's what I was uh, attempting to do, but rather I was attempting to just to share truth in order to have a closer relationship with my family. But that's not what they, you know, interpreted it as. Mm. They interpreted it as me trying to destroy the relationships or whatever. And unfortunately, um, mostly it's because they don't want to feel specific emotions about the truth. Mm. And this is how most families interact with each other. And if you toe the line and you agree, then your life is relatively smooth with your family. And if you don't toe the line and you disagree, most for most people on the planet, their life now is going to get pretty tumultuous with their family. Mm. Mm. And in these three examples we've given um, relating to conscience and um, the different ways our parents, the way we've been parented can affect us. Mm. We've talked about beliefs, lifestyle and emotions. Um, so for yourself, I can see that beliefs and lifestyle was a very large way that and emotions and emotions and emotions. My, my parents, my mum desperately wants to believe that she's a good person, even though she's done some things that are not very nice mm -hmm. and that have harmed the family, actually. Mm -hmm. And my father wants to believe that, you know, his religious belief system, it means that he's a good person, even though he has quite very dark, you know, emotions when it comes to environment and people. And in fact, in, for many religions, he has a very similar view as many religions. And that is, if you're not a member of my religion, eventually you're going to die anyway. Mm. And that's a good thing mm -hmm. <laughs> is the way basically he sees it. So, you know, these things are demonstrating quite unloving conditions. And of course, I've confronted those conditions by my disagreement emotionally with these particular beliefs. It seemed to me, though, that you were more connected to your conscience about the areas that you just mentioned. Yeah. Once I, um, once I disconnected. Than, yeah, rather than in other areas. Whereas for myself, for example, emotions, I've been very, very um, kind of detuned from the conscience. Whereas other aspects of my lifestyle, I felt very firmly that I'm mm. more in tune with my conscience and I live differently to, to my parental upbringing. But see, see, even there, though, they enjoyed the fact that you live differently without confronting them emotionally. So, so it's only in areas where you're going to confront them emotionally, you're going to experience this particular problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you know, if they like you being somebody who's a bit of a star, you know, in their eyes, then, of course, uh, you're going to receive lots of approval until you're not a star anymore. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever been a star. Well, before I met you, that's their view of you. That was their yeah. view of you, where they felt, you know, you were working overseas and you were you were a, a volunteer working abroad and isn't it such a way, you're such a kind person and, and they admired all these qualities. 
But as soon as you were interested in me, now they didn't admire any of those things. <laughs> so this is where, you know, usually there are trigger points for yes. the family to disagree. And those trigger points, once you connect to God's, to the conscience through, to God through the conscience, you'll find them pretty, pretty easily. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I suppose that when I reflect on myself, um, I can see that I would have equally parented in the same way that my parents did if I did not have, and I possibly still would today mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I haven't released some of these, this damage. Mm -hmm. um, but I can see that other aspirations for the desires we spoke about yesterday are the only thing that's going to get me over that, over that mm, and more right. in tune with my conscience on how to parent a child. That's right. Um, so here, here today, we're trying to show people firstly why they are in the state they're in mm -hmm. and secondly, why it is hard to have a desire to be any different. Yes. And and here we can see quite easily in this area, and, and it is such an intense area mm -hmm. because it always it involves family and it, on, on earth, family is like almost everything, you know. <laughs> Um, so, you know, if you disagree harmony with your family, then that, that means that you must have done a really bad thing, you know, type of thing. And, and you know, this kind of belief system, which, which obviously uh, is very flawed from God's perspective, and also causes a lot of very slow progression on the planet. You know, if we all just decided to disconnect from our family overnight, uh, we'd probably find progress uh, on the world quite, quite substantially uh, better the next day. Yeah. Um, but most of us, year, for years or even centuries, we mm -hmm. remain connected with the family based, the childhood experiences that now have determined our life. And unfortunately, we continue to live them way beyond our death. Mm. Mm -hmm. And even uh, having broken away from the family unit, as I have, the belief systems about love, about, you know, what it means to love another. For, uh, just for yeah. example, that is a massive area where I was detuned from my conscience. I, yep. I imbibed their definition and that is very firmly, or it's, yeah, it's still firmly within me. And yeah, it no, you're confronting of, it now, aren't you? And yeah. You're working through it now, but, but it, often it does take years before we even start working through those particular yeah. issues because yeah. those issues are now... They're in us. They're inside of us. That's yes. it. That's what we're saying here. These yes. are factors that are external things that are now caused emotions to be inside of us. And those emotions have to be addressed and dealt with in mm. some time and some way. Mm. But, but most people ignore the addressing of them well into the spirit world. Yeah. And it's only when they realize they're in the same place for hundreds of years frequently in the spirit mm. world that they begin to address these particular problems. Because I know even speaking about it on camera today, I'm quite afraid inside, you know, obviously I'm saying something that's very, I can, I know how my, my family would respond hearing these things, mm. anyone from my family. Mm -hmm. um, and because I still have some of those emotions in me, that feels frightening for me. Um, and most people, and really what I'm saying, as you pointed out, when I started to speak about this, it's not, my family's not that radically different from the average family not on the all. planet. Not at all. And so, um, most people are going to have to go, if they do it on earth, they have to confront, they don't necessarily have to put a video on YouTube about it, but, the, but they're going to have to reach this level of honesty and, and recognise emotionally, as I'm beginning to do, how painful that was for me. And, that you, those and you said that happened. if they do it on earth, my feelings are if you do it any time. Yes. You're going yes. to have to go through these emotions any every any time. People in the spirit world are having to go through these emotions right now, <laughs> right, where they've been with their family for years and now their family's attacking them. And all of them have died. Their family is dead. And <laughs> they're, they're, all dead. they're all up there together. Having the same response. Having the same response yep. <laughs> to, to what's going on. So, yeah. so you know, it, it's, not, it's not unique to the earth. It, it's going to be, it's going to happen no matter what. Yeah. You, if you connect to your conscience at some point in the future, you will confront groups of people and particularly the biggest group of people, or you could say the, the most significant, the most significant yeah. group of people that you're going to confront are your family. Yeah. And, and once, once they've worked all through their issues, they'll probably be happy that you did it. <laughs> but, but until then, you know, my family's now happy I, I did that. But when, when I was going through it in the first century on earth, my father and my mother, none of them were happy. None of my brothers and sisters were happy with what was going on. 
And so, you know, that's the normal fact if you're mm -hmm. doing it, when you're doing it, they're not going to be happy during that time. Mm -hmm. It's only when they start having their own realizations, which by the way, are not really possible unless you have yours. Uh -huh. In many cases, you know, it needs people to start it. You know, someone, some brave member of the family <laughs> has to be the first. And, and in the end, the others uh, often will, will change and move along. Not always, but, but often that will happen if there is some level of self-reflection. So, so, you know, that's, uh, that's par for the course. And it's really, it's, if you want to do things God's way, it's going to happen. There's no, there's no avoiding it. And, and my feelings are, if people have been listening to Divine Truth for five years or 10 years and there's no confrontation with family, then that's pretty good indication that actually they don't know much about Divine <laughs> Truth and they haven't heard much of it and they're certainly not applying hardly any of it <laughs> in their day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Because once you start doing it, you, you soon realise what the paradigm of your family is and how much or how strongly it's it, they will go, how far they'll go to enforce it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our next section is familial emotions and beliefs impact sensitivity to and desire for conscience. So in our last session section, we talked a lot about family, but we sort of had an overlap, didn't we? Our last section was about childhood experiences. Exactly. There's, it's sort of like childhood experiences are a combination of things, aren't they? Yeah. Like family. Oh, and, and who's up, who's bringing you up, what schooling you have, who, who you're interacting with mostly. Yeah. And sometimes that, you know, might be family members that are close, you know, or, or other people that are close to the family that are influencing you a lot as well. So, and also childhood experience is a sum total of our experience yeah. uh, as a child, not just what's involved with the family specifically. That's right. And, mm. and really when we talked about childhood experiences, we're talking about something in the past and now familial emotions and beliefs, that's something still existing today. Exactly. And this is what we want to focus our attention on. The fact that our family has a certain set of beliefs right now, and they have a certain set of emotions right now, and they have a certain lifestyle right now. They have a certain way of believing about religion, politics, and the environment, and you know what you eat, and what you drink, and what you should wear, and all these other things in life. Your family has probably got a very good idea about what they believe about those particular things. And those beliefs are probably very firmly set. Mm -hmm. Now that will have an effect on you and how you can connect to firstly your conscience and secondly, how much desire you will have to connect to your yes. conscience from now on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So how does family influence? Sorry, I'll say that again. How does family influence my sensitivity to the conscience mechanism? and how much I desire to develop sensitivity to it. So yes. here we're again looking at the two aspects, aren't we? That's right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let's look at our current state. Our current state is that even though I'm no longer living at home, let's say I'm, a, I'm an home. adult, I'm no longer living at home, I might even have my own family yeah. by now. You know, I might have my own children, my own wife, uh, own husband, I might have my own lifestyle, everything. Even though I've got all of those kind of things, my belief systems which include all of the things we've mentioned, yeah. are still quite probably well aligned with my family belief systems. Mm -hmm. And and if they're not, then it's highly likely I already don't have much of a relationship with my family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, because the law of attraction works perfectly. So if you're still having a lot to do with your family, there's a high likelihood that you're still in a lot of agreement with their belief systems. Mm -hmm. Or if not in agreement with them, certainly in acceptance of them. Yeah. You're, not, you're not confronting them. Right. So, so that being the case, even though I'm no longer there, I'm still really connected to. I'm still really right, connected to my family and I'm either doing what they agree with or I'm rebelling yes. against what they agree with. And my rebellion, inherent in my rebellion, is uh, it shows that I have some connection to their beliefs. Exactly. Because it's the, a rebellion. The, it's not a, a it's, formed... It's not uh, driven by loving desire or choice. Of my own choices. It's a rebellion. <laughs> it's driven like, something. my dad did that and I don't want to do it, so I'm doing the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, and you see this a lot even with regard to material things, for example. You know, a lot of people who grew up in the 30s and 40s didn't have much money here in Australia. So, so now, you know... 
they they spend a lot of their time working and not much time with the family and thing. And so now a, 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 a son or daughter who's brought up with that kind of family goes, I'm not going to be like my dad who just worked all the time. I'm going to spend all my time with my family, not realising that actually it's just a knee-jerk reaction against the yes. pain of their own childhood. That's Definitely. all it is. It's nothing else. It's yes. not. It's not driven by love or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and you mentioned there just before about if you're having a lot to do with your family, then you're definitely still, you know, in harmony or at least accepting of their beliefs. I know, though, that we have some friends who really don't have very much to do with their family, but they are absolutely still in harmony and accepting of their family beliefs. So I just wanted to clarify that yes, before we yeah. move on. The yeah. reality is if your family are not kicking and screaming... <laughs> <laughs> then it's highly likely you're still in harmony with it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and whether you spend much time with them or not. They, usually most families get pretty upset when your belief system change. Yeah. And, and they usually make a point of it. Yeah. You know, it's very rare for them to just go, oh, you know, their belief system is different than mine, but they're okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very unusual for a person to be fine with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so as you've said, our family continues to influence us more than we realise most of the time. And, and can we say this is an emotional influence yes. now, yeah. where inside of me are emotions that are either in tune with or in rebellion of yes. my family. So this still connects me to my family. Yeah. I'm still connected to them, really. Yeah. 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 And yeah. that's what we need to say here. It's so important for us to understand that we're still in some way connected to their belief systems yes. even if we disagree with them completely yeah. and we get angry about that we're still in you know complete we're influenced influence yes. with our family yes and this is a problem with this particular area familiar emotions while they're like that while this is our condition it's going to be very, very hard for us to remain connected to our conscience because what we're going to internally consider first is our family emotions. Yes. <laughs> Either we... harmony with or disharmony <laughs> with, depending on whether we're in rebellion or, or agreement. And most of the time we're not even considering it, are we? No, we're just acting. It's automatic. And it's often, and we'll talk about this in a later session, it often feels like it is our conscience. Well, yes. It, it feels we like, feel no, guilt. my conscience tells me I should stay at home with my kids. Or well, my... what we need to see is it's guilt. And, and a lot of guilt that we have internally is not our conscience, obviously. All our conscience is, is a sharing of God's truth. A lot of guilt is about the fact that we're now breaking the family rules. Yeah. That's where a lot of our or, guilt, yeah, or yeah. society rules, yeah. or moral, you know, family-based moral rules, or whatever. <laughs> and, and a lot of our guilt comes from there. Yeah. 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 So it's not really conscience anymore. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okie doke. So that's our current state. That's how we are currently yeah, yeah. in relation to a conscience as a result of these familial emotions and beliefs. Yeah. Let's talk about how this, uh, the family now influences my desire to develop a sensitivity. I already don't have one. How's it going to affect me when it comes to developing the sensitivity? Yeah, well, this is quite obvious, isn't it? The more invested in my family is in my beliefs and in my lifestyle and in my feelings, the more likely it is when I disagree with theirs that they're going to revert to some form of emotional or physical abuse or attack. Mm -hmm. And this will range from guilting somebody right the way through to, you know, trying to make their life as difficult as possible mm -hmm. uh, and then say that's because it was because the person did what was in disagreement with the family. Mm -hmm. In other words, most families are willing to go to great lengths even to great destructive lengths to prove to their children, this is most parents, to prove to their children that their parents are right. Even if it means the parents actually personally taking abusive or violent actions in order to establish that proof. Yeah. Yes. And, and that certainly happened in your family and it certainly happened in mine. Mm -hmm. And it pretty much happens in almost fa every family I see. Mm -hmm where most families revert to some form of emotional or physical abuse in, in order to prove to their children that the parental viewpoint was true. Yeah. Which in itself is proof that it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, it, it, because basically what, what is required is for the parent to become unloving 
to prove its loving opinion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which obviously is not possible. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, and then obviously my personal desire to avoid that treatment is going to, so not wanting to confront that potential response or that response yeah. is going to mean that I don't want to develop my sensitivity. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it could also be, you know, most people have this very strong safety connection with family and they, and they think that if they don't have a family, then it means they are not really safe in society. Yeah. And, and so this causes them to believe that if they disconnect from the family, that their future safety and security is actually now going to be severely degraded. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, that then causes them to want to reconnect or stay connected with family, no matter how abusive the family has become. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's talk about some examples to help us uh, tease out this topic. Yes. So our first example is conscience, familial emotions and partner relationships. Yeah. So here we could uh, sort of, let, let's talk about this from firstly from God's perspective of God's truth. Yeah. God's truth is that you are allowed to choose to have a relationship with anyone you wish to. Now that includes male or female. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter what gender they are, you're allowed to have a sexual relationship with them. God's view of morality is you should only have one relationship. Yep. But God's viewpoint of morality also is you should only have the relationship with your soulmate. Right. So that's God's viewpoint of morality. If we take out the God's morality and look at it ethically, yep. the ethics are you're allowed to have a relationship with one person at any time you wish. Right. One person at a time. At a time. Yeah. At any, for any period of time you wish. Yep. Right. And obviously, as you grow or they grow, things may change and uh, you may have a change of relationship as a result of things changing in your life. But you are not constantly looking at other people while you're with that person. You are in your heart, connected to the person, in love with the person and so forth. That's mm -hmm. God's view of the relationship. And God eventually is leading you towards the soulmate connection in that purpose. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's God's view. You're, you're allowed to do have a relationship with, yeah. with, with somebody whom you choose. So that's what the conscience would tell me. That's what my conscience tells me. Yeah. Now, what do our parents tell us? Well, our parents tell us that unless they like the person and they think the person is a nice person and they think the person is a good person and the person feeds their addictions and the person makes them feel comfortable and the person doesn't look bad and the person doesn't like, do what the parents think are bad things and the person has the same doesn't if the, if the person has the same religious viewpoints and the person has the same political leanings and the person has the same you know, environmental leanings, and they eat the same way as you and so forth and so forth. They have the same race. Then most of the time, they'll let you have the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and you can have parents like mine who say, it, whoever you want, regardless of any of those factors, you, we would accept them as yeah. your choice. And that's now proven to be wrong. And that's proven to be wrong. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so whether they In say your it case, out... it was Jesus was the only thing they didn't want. That was on the list. No, <laughs> definitely not. Or a guy saying he's Jesus. Yes. Because, yeah. yeah. So, but what I was meaning to say was they might not say all those things, but often that is the expectation. Yes. And if you look at the extreme violence your parents have perpetrated towards the both of us, right, as a result of you beginning a relationship with me, you can see that they've always thought that way. Yes. You know, there's, yes. no, there's no change in their no. opinion. It's, no. just, it's just the fact that you've never triggered it. Yeah. The other thing was that your father had quite a sort of emotionally incestuous relationship with you. And of course, he is going to be very upset with you ever really giving your heart to another. Yeah. It, it, your daddy's girl yeah. and your no one else's is yeah. the way he sees things. And a lot of men on the planet see uh, things exactly that way. Exactly like that. And many mothers see that exactly the same way with their sons. And so they're happy with their son or daughter um, choosing a life partner or even a long-term partner who the, their child is not fully connected with. Mm -hmm. Often they'll have more approval or more acceptance of that partner than someone who that their child actually wants to love with their whole heart and, yes. and have a life. Yeah. And a lot of times of it's family. not even about the partner. It's not even about them. It's about the parent feeling that their close relationship is being exactly. confronted yeah. by the child's relationship mm -hmm. with another. Mm -hmm. um, 
And and this is where most parents go ballistic even, like they're yeah. terribly emotionally yeah. inflammatory when it yeah. comes to this kind of thing, where they believe that this real close relationship they had with their son or daughter has now been destroyed by this other person coming along. And, uh, and that indicates a high level of codependent addiction the parent had with the child. Yeah. And, uh, and you see this is a big problem. It's a big problem right around the world, this prob problem. Mm -hmm. so, so you can see that a, a parent under these circumstances, the familial emotions will be in complete disagreement with what the conscience is saying. Yeah. So it's highly unlikely for you as the child, even though you're now an adult, mm -hmm. it's highly unlikely for you to, to go against what your parent's saying without there being quite a significant degree of trauma mm. added by the parent mm. into your life. Mm -hmm. And hence we have the whole concept of, oh, she's a mother-in-law concept. Yes. You know, like, you know, <laughs> the wife of a person, of a man being confronting the her, her mother-in-law yeah. um, because the mother's relationship with her son is now being confronted through mm -hmm. the son leaving her yeah. and having a relationship emotionally with this other woman. Mm -hmm. And so frequently parents are really in love with their children mm -hmm. in a really quite distorted way. And this causes uh, obviously a lot of damaging emotions to be projected at the other party yeah. and then eventually at their own children if the first group of projections don't work. In yeah. other words, the parent will first project at the partner of the child, mm -hmm. trying to get the partner to get lost out yes. of the child's yes. life. And then when that doesn't work, then the parent's upset with the child now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and you've been through that yourself. Definitely. And, uh, and I know many, many people that have been through that experience. Yes, yeah. But all of those things create that problem with the conscience. Yes. Yeah. So now the conscience is in direct confrontation to the familial emotions about the relationship. Mm -hmm. And now the parents are going to interfere with the relationship as much as they possibly can mm -hmm. and potentially try to destroy the relationship. And they do it all in the guise of, I'm helping my child. Yeah. This person is bad for my child. Mm. And um, I know for myself and other, there's other people that I know who've sort of followed their conscience and and committed to their partner or stayed with their partner that their family disapproves of mm. but very often those people struggle don't they because there's all these emotions that have to let go of grief of not being loved and not being accepted and feeling and security that, and safety even yes yeah. feeling like an orphan all these kind mm. of emotions that come up mm -hmm. as a result but that um willingness to listen to conscience is um, obviously an asset in yes. a person's life. Well, yeah. in the end too, the conscience is telling you that God's your real parent anyway. Yeah. And if yeah. you lose these so-called yeah. parents that you have, well, you've lost nothing but the person who gave birth to the body or the genetic, who made the genetic material you're living in. That's all you've ever lost. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so if, if a parent chooses to put this kind of abuse or emotional abuse on a child, then obviously they're not worthy to be in the child's life at this point in time mm. until such a point that the parent decides to change and look at themselves and say, well, what I did was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need to change that. Mm. All right. Our second example is conscience, familial emotions and relationship with God. So this is a, another really significant one, isn't it, where you see all across the globe uh, familial emotions, so and again making the distinction between not just parents here but a whole family system and in, mm. in some cultures it's the entire extended family mm -hmm. uh, has the same belief about God mm -hmm. and that is very very challenging for a child growing up in that environment to then say well my conscience is telling me something different about God. It's very rare for a, for a person even as an adult mm -hmm. to confront the religious beliefs of their family. Mm -hmm. Very rare. The reason why it's very rare is because most people in religion have a self-righteous, have such a lot of self-righteousness that they're willing to resort to quite extreme violence in order to maintain this religious control over the family system. Mm. And, and we see this happening in Christianity, in the Islamic faith, and in many other religious yeah. faiths on the planet. 
and and it's very very damaging to your conscience and could i also contrast that between uh i exp- have encountered it with people who have uh, grown up in sort of an atheist background it, it's exactly then, there too yes who then say actually i think god's real and i want to have a relationship with god mm-hmm. sometimes the pressure and the derision is quite um, intense. intense. Intense, yeah. yeah. Ironically, many atheists won't revert to the same level of violence <laughs> as the Christians and the yeah. Muslims often yeah. refer, revert to in the family because uh, many atheists do have some connection to their ethics, yeah. at least. And that's one reason why they've become an atheist is because mm-hmm. they do have some kind of connection to ethics with regard to religion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, oftentimes uh, an atheist may have less of a I worry about it. Although you can see that if they've lived their whole life an atheist and their child now has decided to become, say, a Christian, yep. then obviously there's going to be quite a lot of pressure to bear <laughs> yes. on the child yep. unless that atheist has got a pretty good sense of ethics in their own in their own life. In their own life. So so this is a big problem on the planet and it's the main reason why religions have passed their use by date. And because when I say pass their use by date, most I think any logical analysis of most religious forms of, on, on the earth can see that there is a huge distortion of scientific truth in these religious faiths. Mm-hmm. Now, as a result of that, most of these religious faiths continue for, for millennia through this familial emotional condition. They continue for millennia way past the developmental process of society in general. Mm. And, and people hold on to religious faith in the face of all kinds of opposition, mostly because they still get the acknowledgement and approval of their family. Yeah. And, and that's a huge motivation to hold on to a belief system. And bear in mind here, God is already through the conscience trying to inform us that most almost all of these belief systems, these religious belief systems on this planet, mm-hmm. almost all of them, are out of harmony with love. Yes. Right? And God's through the conscience is trying to inform all of us about this. Mm-hmm. And yet the majority of people in religious faith hold on to their unloving belief systems, which mm-hmm. have nothing to do with the relationship with God. Now, when you begin a proper relationship with God, which means following God's truth about the conscience, you're now confronting every religious system of things that your family believes in, whether it's atheism, agnosticism, uh, new age, uh, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, yeah. whatever, yeah. You're, you are confronting it. And because, because God's truth does confront every religious faith on the planet, because God's truth is very different to every religious faith on the planet. Mm-hmm. As a result of that, the family are going to put pressure on you to not have the relationship with God and to instead have their relationship with God. Yes. Which is not with God at all because their God does not exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a, usually a lot of pressure that brought to bear here. And because it's so self-righteous, yes. it often reverts to extreme violence where people yeah. are willing to kill their own children yeah. in order to maintain the religious, what they call the religious honour of their family. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to mention um, as well that because we're talking about familial emotions and relationship with God, I've also known a number of people who have, say, for themselves personally, internally disengaged with the familial um, uh, system of belief. So um, I've lived in the Middle East, so I've known people of like Jewish faith and Islamic faith, and there's a lot in Lebanon itself. There's like thirteen different religious faiths. Yeah. So um, I've known a, a number of people who've said, "Look, me personally, for myself, I don't believe in that stuff." But there is so if you like, maybe that's their conscience telling them that, okay, there's, that's not the truth. But they still, and this goes back to our previous example about partner relationships, they would still never marry outside their faith. They would still never, they would still observe certain rituals like fasting in Ramadan and things like that. And so, Particularly if, if they're with their family. With their family, <laughs> exactly. So, Even though they completely do yeah. and they call that honouring it. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah. and being respectful and yeah. all of these and things. And it's not so, doing either of those things. Yeah, so you're not honouring God's truth. That's right. Exactly. And you, you're not even honouring your own, what you've 
even established for yourself uh, internally, ethically even. No. And so uh, there's so many um, nuances to this to this way that, you know, the conscience and from family beliefs and God and all of that can, can come together mm. and not work very well. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So it is a big area where conscience comes in direct harm and disharmony mm -hmm. with the family's based emotional system when yeah. it comes to relationship with God. And, and it is a huge source of a lot of pain and suffering for people who, who basically want to accept some truth from God, but, but their families will, will not allow them to do so at the threat of even their own life. Yeah. 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 It's sad. Sad, it really. Sad. Mm. Sad. All right. Our final example is conscience, familial emotions and desire to release emotion. So this is a good one. <laughs> yes, uh, people on earth have a very, very strong, and in the lower realms of the spirit realm, have very strong uh, resentment of having to feel emotion. <laughs> <laughs> and they, not only do they not believe in it as a form of uh, working through and processing through beliefs and, and feelings, but they also feel that it's very destructive and psychologically damaging and disturbing. And as a result of their very strongly held beliefs with regard to emotions, when one of the family members start going through a process of emotional release, mm -hmm. usually the rest of the family have huge uh, upheaval with regard to that process. Yeah. Even to the point of committing, psychologically committing the person yeah. to a psychiatric institution yeah. in order to prevent the child from actually working through the emotion. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a very, very strong uh, desire in most people to avoid their own emotion. Yeah. And so as a result, they really would want their children to avoid theirs too. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons for it. One, one primary one, of course, is if the child feels its emotion, then it might in the end feel the truth about the parent. <laughs> and so naturally the parent wants to stop the child from going through that particular process. <laughs> yeah, or it might cause an emotional response within the parent, not about even the child knowing the truth, but just that the parent has so many suppressed emotions of grief and so on. Exactly. Mm. But in harmony with this one as well is another thing that it's not so much in Australian culture, I've got to say, <laughs> but in some... Um, uh, European and some Mediterranean and some South American cultures, their overt displays of seeming emotion are very much rewarded in a familial system, but sincere release of emotion... Not rewarded. Not rewarded yeah. and often still punished. So you see, for example, in these kind of societies where, you know, if somebody's died or had a, had a bad experience and everyone in family gets together and just cries and cries and cries, but nobody releases anything really. And nobody really deals with why are they crying? <laughs> nobody deals with their codependent addictions they had with the person who passed or yeah, anything yeah, like that, yeah. which is one of the reasons why they're crying. Yeah. But, uh, but, but they view that as a good experience yes. or, or, a, or a, a demonstration of their love for the person. Or there's quite a lot of pressure mm. to e exhibit the same sorts of uh, sort of yeah. Responses, flamboyant, flamboyant displays yes. of what I would classify as insincere emotion. Yes. And so a child or an adult acting in harmony with their conscience in that state might confront those things. So actually my real emotion here is feeling oppressed. Yeah. Or <laughs> and, I feel angry about that person. Yes. You know, yeah. that person treated me bad all their life. I'm glad they're dead. <laughs> that yeah. kind of feeling. You can't say those things. No, in or those I, I want to have a cry about how I was abused by Uncle Mike. Yeah. You know, those kinds of things. Exactly. And there's often a lot of pressure against those kinds of That's releases right. of emotion. So here we're talking about truthful emotional release mm -hmm. and the society society and this is all society really yeah. on earth has a has a large degree of desire to avoid it and certainly. and and certainly in many cases desires to attack it yes and uh, so when you find god's way and you start doing things god's way and you start processing through things emotionally one of the very first criticisms you're going to receive from society and family is why are you crying so much or <laughs> why do you have to feel these things or yeah. you're just putting yourself through extra pain or you're just traumatizing, yeah. traumatizing yourself more or yeah. you know and it goes on and on it's and on and healthy. on. It's not healthy, you can't be yeah. trusted. In an, you, uh, yeah, uh, in an yeah. attempt to get you out of doing the work you need to do to, yeah. in order to progress. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah.